Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson. Welcome to Tea Time. This is unedited and unscripted, and we're gonna explore topics in this video relating to body dysphoria and how we can work through accepting our own body. I think this is a really important topic that a lot of trans people go through, and um, we have some, some ideas to explore as well as some tricks and tools that I've learned in working through this process that I'd love to share with you. And I'm sure you also have some tricks, so I'd also love to hear from you in what's worked and uh, some 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 tips that that you got. You know, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear them. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like, how do you? Kind of the first question is, how do you experience your dysphoria? Where does it come up? Uh, uh, for me, the first time it came up, it was uh, looking in the mirror, um, seeing this self that I didn't really identify with that was too masculine and something that I just didn't agree with. You know, how's that come up for you? Where in your life do you feel the most dysphoria? Is it when you're trying on clothes or is it when you're looking in the mirror? For me, the mirror is probably the biggest thing, honestly. Um, and clothes actually as well. When I put on clothes that make my shoulders look too big, it's like I wanted to wear it, I thought it'd look good on me, but now it's just showing how big my shoulders are. And that also makes me a little upset. So when we're like thinking about like our acceptance of our body, there's a lot of things to maneuver with. And I don't have a magic bullet answer for all of the different ways that we have to work through our body acceptance. And another question to ask is, should we even accept everything that we have? Is that the, the best case or is there there's some other way of navigating this? Because for me, I have accepted things that I cannot change. Um, some things I still haven't accepted that I cannot change, but I've also accepted that I can change things and that I will change those things. I made a video a while ago about finishing my transition and this year, though a lot of changes have happened, so we'll see. But um, it's, you know, it's a funny thing when you're trans because you've suddenly opened up the door to saying that you can change your body to match your gender, um, such as taking hormones, you know? Uh, so once you open up that door saying that it's possible to change your body, now you've kind of, said, I can change my body, so what else can I change? And, you know, people go for their their bottom surgery or top surgery. And so for me, it's like, well, what surgeries do I want? And uh, what do I just want to just accept? And what can I change? And um, one of the things that's really helped me, especially early in my transition, was when I looked in the mirror and I would catch myself being judgmental and dysphoric right before it would happen. I would condition myself to think something positively, to see the woman in the mirror. So as I would walk into the bathroom, just be like, I'm gonna see her and I'm gonna see the woman in the mirror. I'm not gonna try to be too hypercritical. I'm not gonna try and fixate on anything. Just see the woman in the mirror. And this took me a really long time to work through. Um, but around about a year and a half in, a year and a half of doing this, I finally started to see her in the mirror. And this is just, it's a long process and sometimes it may not happen the same way that you want it. But I learned to focus on the features that I like, like I like my eyes. Um, and I try not to focus too much on the features that I don't like. How is it for you when you look at yourself in the mirror? Uh, what do you work through or what comes up and how are you able to, to work through that or are you not able to work through that? There's a whole like layer of body confidence and self-confidence in here too. And the self-confidence piece is, is self-love. Um, like how much do you give yourself like love when you see yourself in the mirror? How much? Um, I think we underestimate this, but sending love and saying something like, I love you into the mirror can be really powerful. And uh, I, I have, have a friend who's a coach that works with some people that have had a lot of self-hate and b 
because of that they kind of channel that externally into destruction. And just by giving them the exercise of waking up every day, looking in the mirror and saying, I love you, you're valid, and you can do great things has really helped bring up a lot and kind of rehash through things. Because like, what are these voices that are in our heads that are telling us all these negative things? Why do they exist? Why do we have to do these things? I don't know if for you, but for me, I feel like the cr hypercritical part of myself is acting out of defense to like work. So like, I don't have to, you know, um, if, if, if I'm a critical person about how well I pass, then at least I'll be safer out there for other people who might be critical of me. You know, does that make sense? Um, it's just, but then it makes me upset, right? Because then I'll look at myself in ways that it won't make me happy. So there's sort of like this balance that I've found in myself, which is uh, learning to kind of work with that voice and not giving it as much weight or as much belief because we're not our thoughts. This is something that mindfulness teaches us that we're not our thoughts, that our thoughts can, can, stay, can enter the room, they can say a bunch of things and they can leave. And we don't have to believe them. We don't have to give them the power. And I think a lot of trans people have these like little thoughts that really get them, that really get them and can trigger them. Um, you know, like uh, if someone made a comment about, you know, how it's better to have a vagina than not to have a vagina. And that for me could be like pulling into the story of being trans and not being good enough. And here's another reason why I'm not good enough that story can really get me. Uh, and you know, like, what is it for you that really gets you? And um, it can be, we can condition into these neural pathways so deeply that we don't even question them anymore and we just take them as fact. And I think that's the risk that we uh, incur when we transition is we start to buy into internal stories and narratives such as I've transitioned and that also means that I accept that my body isn't what I accept it as. <laughs> That's a weird one, right? So it's like a double-edged sword. You can say, I accept that I can change things, but I also accept that things need to be changed. And uh, my date last night was saying this. Um, he was saying, uh, you know, we should all work towards just accepting with what we have, what we've got. And <laughs> I'm saying, well, you're not trans. You don't really get it, but also, he does get it in some, some level. Like we have to find ways in which we can accept things that we can't control. And that is going to cause so much um, relief to, to be able to alleviate some things and say, you know what, I just, I just can't change this. I just can't, there's no way about this. It just is. And this kind of gets me into another technique and story that has helped me and that other trans women have shared with me, which is just like, you know what? Like your shoulders may look big, but have you looked at tall women before? Have you seen how big their shoulders are? Um, being like, I think there's this whole image, especially with for women, right? Like this, this image of what an ideal woman is in our heads and using that as a framework for comparison and not getting. And it's probably the same for men too. Um, trans men, if you're out there, let me know if you're there. <laughs> Love to hear from you right now. It's just mostly trans women. Um, and so when we have, I lost my train of thought. When we have, um, hi, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. When we have this, um, this kind of like ideal image of our, of ourselves or of what we think we can it's just it's something that we can't ac actually ever achieve and I would almost say like welcome to the women's world where and the men's world too now where the image of what's ideal is just not attainable without an insane amount of surgery or not even with surgery so um, you know being realistic and also just looking like when you walk in the street I sometimes I see people's bodies and I go I really would like that and I'd really like that almost like I'm shopping right but that's not it's selective and it's not really giving me an actual view of what is 
like to be a real woman because there's real women that don't have bodies that I want and I don't look at those and I don't like say, you know what, I have something uh, that's beautiful here. Now, kind of like beautiful here taps into the last thing which I'll say, which is probably the most important thing, which is self-partnership. Um, being a partner to yourself means acknowledging some of the things that are that bring sadness and giving you that embrace that you can only achieve to say, you know what? Yeah, you don't have that, but I still love you. And I accept you for what you have. And if you wanna change that, we can go on ahead and change that and that's totally fine. But also you don't need to change it for me. That's something that we can say to ourselves and um, something that I've learned in practicing and innovating on sort of this self-partnership there's not a lot out there, but I think it's a really powerful uh, way of working through things. The strangest thing that I learned through working through self-partnership is that you can give yourself love. We think that we can't achieve love unless it's externally given to us, that we need an external source to achieve love. But once you practice giving yourself love and believing that you can be the receiver of your own love, then we can really start to open up and expand into our own grace and beauty. So I'll leave it on that note, and I'd love to hear from you how you work through your self-love, how you work through your own body dysphoria, and, and how, what kind of frameworks or tools or practices do you use? Thanks for joining today, and uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.